Do you notice when you're trying to do a power loop, you often end up hundreds of feet in the air and maybe not far enough back? What about your turns? Throughout the turn, do you notice that you're always higher than where you started at? The skill you may be lacking is called throttle control, and it can be very difficult to master. It's a skill plateau that most of us run into at one point or another, and it can be very difficult to overcome, especially if you already have bad habits. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five different tips and tricks that I have learned through my time flying in the hopes that it'll help you improve your throttle control as well. Now, I'm by no means the best pilot out there, but I at least know enough to point you in the right direction to hopefully get you off that plateau and keep improving. Let's get into it. So the first thing I would recommend doing if you're experiencing throttle control issues is giving yourself a little bit of expo in the rate profile settings of Betaflight. Now expo, for those that don't know, it just flattens the, the throttle curve a little bit. So instead of being a linear path from zero to 100% throttle, it just adds like a little flat spot essentially. So what that does is it gives you more precision in that mid range of the throttle. So if you're noticing that you don't quite have enough range in the throttle, maybe it feels like you barely touch it and all of a sudden it's way too high, or you barely drop it and all of a sudden it's diving. That could be indicative of needing to add some expo in there. It really does help. It makes it feel a lot more precise. So I'd recommend starting there. Now I personally use about 0.2 to 0.3, kind of depending on what I'm trying to do. And that might be low for some, it might be high for some. It doesn't really matter what the value is as long as it feels good to you. So I would say start at maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2 like I'm at. You can always go up from there. Try it out, get a feel for it a little bit, and adjust it later if you need to. The second tip I have sounds really obvious, but honestly, it's really not. Pay attention to the orientation of your drone. I know, obvious, right? Well, coming from fixed wing, at least for me, that's not obvious because you have a wing to guide you through the maneuver. You can glide. But with a drone, all you have is the four motors. Whatever way the drone goes is only controlled by those, and it goes only in the direction of the thrust. A lot of beginners have this issue specifically with power loops and other like inverted maneuvers, and that's because it just doesn't feel natural. It feels really weird to be maybe like vertical like this, because when all you see is blue sky in your goggles, you don't know which way you're facing. And then you couple that with the camera angle that some people use, it's very difficult to master. If my drone's like this and I give it throttle, it'll go up. If it's like this, I give it throttle, it'll go that way. It only goes in the direction of the thrust. Now we all conceptually know that, but for some reason when you're flying, I feel like a lot of people forget about that and that's why they end up way too high or you know, their turns become really sloppy and they gain a bunch of altitude or maybe they drop a bunch of altitude. Pay attention to where the drone is facing. Think slower, flowier, smoother flight instead of fast, twitchy stuff. Now there are pilots out there like Mr. Steel that he's known for that, but you gotta understand that Mr. Steel has been doing this for years. He's a master of the throttle control, so he can get away with that. But if you're a beginner and you try to do the fast, twitchy maneuver stuff, it's very hard to control the throttle accurately when the drone is moving really, really quick in all directions, because your brain just can't comprehend which way it's facing fast enough to act on the throttle. So I would recommend, especially if you're first starting out, start with slower linked maneuvers, like flowy type stuff. So think of Le Drib or Vanover recently. Just think flow instead of packing a bunch of tricks into the tightest space and the tightest time frame possible. All right, so the next one here is about where to practice this specifically. So as far as controlling the altitude in, you know, in maybe a turn or some of that like low level weaving in and out of stuff flight, what I like to do is find like a, a patch of trees, like pine trees are usually pretty good for this, where they have low hanging leaves, where there's like a hard ceiling to how high you can go. There's the ground, then there's the leaves. And what I'll do in here is I'll just rip around these trees, almost like I'm racing. I'll just weave in and out as fast as I can and just try to control the throttle. If you give it too much throttle, you hit the trees. If you don't give it enough, you hit the ground. But luckily you're not going fast enough in any you know, up or down direction to really cause that much damage. 
So just find yourself a patch of trees like that, maybe some like outdoor archways or overpasses or something like that with a, a ceiling to it and the ground. Now the lower the better, obviously. If you wanna really get better at it, you wanna make that ceiling as low as possible so you can practice really, really honing in your altitude throughout a set of turns. But to start with, maybe find, I don't know, 10, 20 feet, something like that, depending how experienced you are. Start there and just work your way down. It really does help with the throttle control. So my last point here is to find a place to practice proximity flying. So this is similar to my last point, but in this one I'm referring to like dive gaps or like knife edge gaps, things that you have to be aware of kind of how big your drone is and if it'll fit in certain spaces. So in a knife edge gap, for example, if you're flying your drone, you're flying your drone along, you rotate it like that to fit through the knife edge. Now, what do you think happens if you apply throttle? Well, it'll go that way. If you apply throttle in a knife edge gap, you could run right into part of the gap. Maybe it's a tree or some other obstacle that you're trying to fly through. That'll really help with knowing how big your drone is and knowing what will happen to the flight path if you apply throttle. The smaller the gap or whatever you're trying to fit through, the more aware of the throttle you have to be. All right, well, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you guys learned something. A lot of this stuff honestly just requires a lot of stick time. It's really hard to control something when you have no visual reference like we do in the goggles. So it just, it requires time on the sticks to get a feel for the drone and what your thumb actions do on the radio. Nobody likes to hear that because it requires a lot of effort and a lot of time, but unfortunately that is the only way to do some of these things. But just be patient, you will get better eventually, I promise. But anyways, if you like this video, I'd appreciate dropping a like down below. Feel free to leave me a comment and please subscribe if you haven't. See you on the next one.